Dear friends, good evening. Thank you for joining us again this week for another lecture in our pre-chamber series. And tonight, we have a really good lecture with a lot of practical opportunity. And our lecture tonight is called Astral Unfoldment. This is one of those skills that is crucial for any sincere Gnostic student. Look, when Samael is offering the many keys that he gives in his in his many, many written works. He encourages the, the young students to look for the opportunity on learning how to unfold consciously in their astral bodies so that uh, they can uh, revisit uh, certain events in, in their lives as they have an opportunity to look back in time into that book of life. He encourages them so that he can, uh, so that they can have conversations with long loved, uh, lost loved ones. Uh, but as we start advancing in the studies, we come to see that astral unfoldment is crucial because there are some specific tests that every sincere Gnostic student must go through. And these tests are only available to the student when the student can present themselves consciously in the astral plane and ask of their innermost for these tests. You know, we're going to clarify these things. But we share this because the purpose of astral unfoldment goes beyond being able to speak to the to those souls of those long lost ones. It goes beyond the ability to be able to travel anywhere in the world and you yourself find yourself there. You know, there are some superior motives by which it is necessary that we can dominate this particular skill and that we can unfold consciously in our body. So let's start as we do in our pre-chamber lectures with a quote from Master Samael Ombeor. And he says, Man is a triad of body, soul, and spirit. The soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. We have a soul. We are a spirit. And between the earthly man and the being exists the soul. Notice how elegantly Samael brings into play here this cosmic law of the Tria Mashikam. No, this is the law of the Holy Three. This is the law that states that from the Three, always a creation emerges. And he is telling us on this thing that we are, well, there is an aspect of us that is a human machine. That is our body. But beyond that, knowing that the body is at one extreme in, in that continuum of density, on that realm of dense substance, on the other extreme, we have the realm of the spirit. And right there, there is an aspect of each and every one of us as well. Our divine innermost is indeed a spirit. And the one thing that we have incarnated from our spirit, from our innermost, is the consciousness. And that consciousness is a beautiful treasure because the consciousness is the psychic material that we have been given so that we can create a soul of a solar radiant nature. And as it is today, well, we have our consciousness as the, as the mediator between the spirit and the body. But this consciousness is trapped. It is dispersed. It is segregated amongst the many psychological aggregates that we have. But let us say this. The psychological aggregates that we have are not just those that uh, are very easily recognizable as the ones that we would like to get rid of. You know, things like, uh, uh, let's say, our jealousies and our greeds and our ambitions, also our judgments and our fears and our criticisms, all of those things, well, yeah, th there are aggregates there. But it is important that even at this entry level of study, 
that we all understand that our consciousness is also mostly trapped <clears throat> excuse me in our positive values because we have defects of an inferior destructive nature and we also have defects that tend and have proven to be fairly useful they have gotten us in trouble you know there are many aspects of us that want to be kind and compassionate and that they want to be serviceable and that they want to be useful to others and in those impulses of being serviceable and useful sometimes we do and say things that fire back in ways that we were not expecting and we end up creating problems as well everybody has experienced experience that so we have our consciousness trapped within values that are positive and values that are negative and the combination of all of those is what makes up today the soul that we all carry so on one hand we have the spirit as that divine pure strong creative force on the other extreme, we have this human body that is the vehicle that the spirit uses so that it can gain all of this experience from this lower realms of creation. And as the intermediary, the soul and within the soul trapped is the consciousness. And every night as we go to sleep, there is a moment in which our soul leaves the physical body. And this happens every night. And it has been happening every single day of our lives. Whether it is in this life or the many other countless lives that we have had before. The moment that the physical body goes to sleep... <laughs> Our soul naturally lifts and it, it unfolds from the body with a very particular purpose. And that is to allow the ethereal body, that body that uh, uh, in, 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 in the Eastern tradition is known as the Lingam Sarira, and that in the Western tradition is known as the quote-unquote subtle body. It is that ethereal body, the one that is responsible then when the soul unfolds to come into play and help restore the functions and help restore and rejuvenate tissues and, re and and refresh the body so that as we use and sometimes abuse of it during the day that it can be ready for more work the next day unfoldment happens on a daily basis every time that we unfold and we see ourselves uh, it, whether it is flying in our dreams or we see ourselves in places that are familiar and suddenly they are not or whether we are witnessing chaotic situations that seem to have no logic or meaning happening one after the other in all of these events that we call dreams all of these dreams they are astral experiences and these experiences happen every day whether you remember them in the morning or not so when it comes to astral unfoldment the unfoldment happens every day naturally and thus any conception or idea that it may be dangerous is a fallacy if anyone tells you that unfolding in your astral body is dangerous don't do it just smile, because they have certainly been influenced by the words of someone who has really not to uh, uh, has not developed a lot of dexterity in this, and is certainly uh, populated with 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 fixed ideas and incorrect concepts. We unfold every night for the purpose of allowing the physical body to regenerate, to be restored for the next morning. Astral unfoldment is certainly not dangerous. And what we are seeking to do here is to unfold in such a way that we can make it conscious. And that requires of a change in our discipline. 
it also requires a change in our habits. Because the habits that we carry along during the day, they are ingrained enough in our doings that we end up repeating them at night. So let's talk a little bit about this thing called the astral body. In our astral body, and we're going to change nomenclature, in our lunar soul, in that conglomerate of our consciousness trapped in many, many different psychological aggregates, in that bundle right there, that is where we have our mind, our willpower, and our consciousness. It is there where we also have our fears and our desires. It is there where we have our longings and our ambitions. It is there where we have our expressions of kindness as much as our expressions of hatred. All of that exists within our lunar soul. And the whole purpose of the sincere Gnostic practitioner is to liberate the consciousness from that chaos that the consciousness has created itself. The whole purpose is to slowly shed all of those psychological aggregates by using a power superior to the mind so that we can then allow the consciousness to emerge free. Because with the consciousness free, it becomes very easy for it to have that direct interaction with the innermost. So, we are looking, as we speak about unfolding in our astral body, about making a transition from this current state, that is a state of, of vigil, a state in which our physical body is awake and that we are striving to also awaken our consciousness and go from this particular state to allow the physical body to remain asleep but bring this very same higher degree of awareness into a higher dimension of nature. Because the astral body corresponds with the fifth dimension. Every time that we are sleeping and that, and that we are literally dreaming, our soul is wandering within that fifth dimension of nature. And it is in this fifth dimension of nature where we can find the great masters. It is in the fifth dimension of nature where we can find angels, we can find archangels, but we can also find the souls of our loved ones, all, all our loved ones who have, uh, who have moved on. And it is here, in this fifth dimension of nature, where we can not only witness all of these phenomenal experiences, but also we can receive the teachings directly from the lips of the masters. And that is such a favorable condition. Because then, when we have that opportunity, that is so much more fruitful. <laughs> Just listening to uh, some of us instructors that have only a fraction, if, if anything, an, infinite, an infinitely small fraction of that wisdom that those masters could give us in just a brief, a brief dissertation or just some, some short but very profound and concise words, you see? So with our astral body, not only we have the opportunity of projecting ourselves anywhere in the world, not only we have the opportunity of reaching out and seeing once again the souls of our loved ones and exchanging with them. But we also have the opportunity to truly be educated, to receive real profound teachings, to witness the beauty of some of the most sacred rituals as the rituals that are played in the temple of love out in, in Tula and Teotihuacan. 
So look, for us to unfold, in this particular lesson, we're going to cover 12 distinct keys. These keys, and there are many more, in some else works, you will be able to find anything between 20 and 30. Uh, and these keys are so many because some of them will resonate very well with you and some of them will appear to you a little strange. And Samael gives us all of these keys so that we can effectively put them all into use, so that we can all put them into practice. Because the one with which you will hold the highest affinity will give you, of course, the best result. So he gives us a tremendous amount of keys so that we can slowly put them all to use into practice. And with what we're going to be sharing here with you, if you were to dedicate just a single one week to any given practice, you will find that you will, that you will have here easily three months of good work. And in those three months of good work, not only you will give yourself of identifying a key moment of transition that is called as the initiating element, you will also be able to discern which ones are the ones that allow you uh, for, a, a, for, for the right identification of the transition and for the right ability to leave that physical body behind at will. So look, if we're going to start with the first key to unfoldment, what you will notice is that regardless of the key that you are using, there are some basic fundamentals that need to be maintained. Because we are at a very beginning stage, it is very convenient for us to be resting on our backs when we're going to be doing these practices. So to rest on our back, if we can align our head to the magnetic north of the planet, that makes it so much better. Because the moment that we align ourselves with the natural flow of currents of the planet itself, then we can, we can make use of those electromagnetic forces at our advantage. So we are looking at resting comfortably on our backs. Whether you choose to, to rest on your back uh, with your arms resting alongside your body, with your heels together, allowing your feet to fan up comfortably into place, uh, that would be phenomenal because that posture is known as the, as the corpse posture. And it is called the corpse posture because uh, it is uh, symbolically very profound. The ancients, after all, they used to say that every time that we go to sleep, that we are going through the process of the quote-unquote small death. You see, the soul leaves the body, and the body then regenerates. But the thing is, is that we can always make it back. Regardless of where we go in the astral plane, regardless where we may see ourselves in the dream, we always make it back to the physical body. And the reason behind that is because our soul is connected to the physical body directly at the level of the heart through a, by a silver thread that is known as the thread of Antakarana. This silver thread gives you the ability to go anywhere and always come back into your physical vehicle. This particular thread has the, capa the capability of stretching itself to the very edges of the infinite and still bring you back. The moment in which that thread no longer brings you back is at the moment in which uh, the physical body dies. You know, the moment that the angel of death comes around and, and as part of his work, he exercises uh, the, 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 the role of just, of just severing that thread of Antakarana. And the moment that happens, the soul, well, it leaves the body and it just cannot come back. So <laughs> we, we will speak about those processes of death at some other time. But now that we're speaking about going to sleep and dreaming, well, the soul always makes it back into the physicality because of this particular thread. And if we are resting on our backs, 
and if we are aligned to the flow of the electromagnetic currents of the planet, then the unfoldment becomes so much more easier. But we not only have to just rest on our back. As we are resting, we have to seek to bring the body into a deep state of relaxation. Because if when we're trying to go to sleep, we're still carrying all the tension and all the worries and all the preoccupations from the day, you know, then uh, not only we're going to have a rough time uh, trying just to fall asleep, but when we do, as our soul unfolds, it will bring with it all of those tense, all of, uh, all of those elements that bring up that state of deep tense, tenseness, and it will bring about uh, all of its worries and preoccupations into the dream state as well. And if the body is not relaxed, it becomes so much more difficult for the ethereal body to help restore and regenerate the physical body itself. So we are seeking just to relax our physical body. Every Thursday, as we come together for our Gnostic Labs of Practical Application, we go through different exercises of relaxation. By now, you should be very familiar with the practice of the gnomes, with the projections of, the, of, the, of our heartbeat and, and, and the pulsations of the heart, uh, etc. So we put those into use and we relax our body. And now that we are resting on our back, and we have relaxed our body, we start applying these keys that somehow gives us. And this first one is a very simple prayer. The idea of this prayer is that we do not give an opportunity to the mind to wander around in its own fantasies. The idea here behind this prayer is that we invoke of a power superior to the mind, so we keep the mind captive in something that is productive and useful, and we use of all of that creative energy within us so that we can make an invocation asking for this particular help. And what we will say is, I believe in God, I believe in my Divine Mother, I believe in white magic. Divine Mother, take me out of my body. And we repeat that again. I believe in God. I believe in my Divine Mother. I believe in white magic. Divine Mother, take me out of my body. And we continually recite this prayer deep within our mind. We do not recite this mechanically. We recite it with devotion. We see our hell, ourselves elevating this petition from deep within the temple of our heart until we start reaching that sensation of falling asleep. And we have to be aware enough so that we can distinguish that moment in which we are half awake and half asleep. Which, by now, you have already learned that that is one of the fundamental rules of meditation. So, as you have been meditating for so long already, it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to identify that transition state. So, when you start getting that sensation of falling asleep, remain very vigilant of your dream. Because as you are observant, you will see that the first images of the dream start showing up. These images are very consistent and they will present themselves repeatedly night after night. This is what is known as the initiating element. Remain very watchful. And as you are reaching that sensation of falling asleep, friends, all that you have to do is just get up. Not a mental exercise. You do not imagine yourself getting up. That moment, just sit and stand 
as you sit and stand every morning. And the moment you will do that, you will naturally leave your physical body behind. When you do this, as you stand up, just leap. But listen, leap with the intention of floating. Don't leap with the intention of leaping. Leap with the intention of floating. And as you have done this before, <laughs> it is very likely that many of you have noticed this already, as you leap, you will notice that it will take like longer for you to come back down. <laughs> and you will notice that you don't. It is then and there that you will realize that you have already unfolded in your astral body. Many students become very excited the moment that they see themselves leaping and actually floating. And their excitement is such that it, the, the vibration of that excitement through the thread of Antakarana comes all the way back to the physical body as if you were as if you were plucking a string on a violin. And the sensation gets to the body and the body wakes up. <gasps> And then you find yourself once again in bed. And it is a good excitement. You see, those are small victories. Don't feel uh, uh, frustrated or depressed or, or don't think that you have not been successful. These are all small steps. And in these small victories, we just continue moving forward little by little as we continue practicing. Now, Samael says, be very vigilant of your dream. And he says, dedicate 40 days for you to observe the transition state. 40 days. We will encourage you to do this. And we will encourage you to do this starting today. Because whether you do it or not, the 40 days are just going to go by. If the 40 days are going to go by anyway, we might as well make good use of them. So dedicate the next 40 days to observe this transition state so that you can find what is your initiating element. And you will get good at unfolding consciously in your astral body. I believe in God. I believe in my Divine Mother. I believe in white magic. Divine Mother, take me out of my body. This is the first key of unfoldment. The second key comes with developing habits but habits that are certainly useful so we if we're looking at developing useful habits then that means that we need to develop a habit that is of course repeatable while we are in the physical vehicle so that when the body is sleeping that we can replicate that habit in the dream state and Samael says for the key of discernment at any moment when you see a friend, any moment when you come across a crowd, at any instance when you see something that is curious, that catches your interest, any moment that you see a loved one, particularly a loved one who you know has passed away, ask yourself the following question. Am I in my astral body? Because it is very common for many students to notice that as they look at their previous dream experiences, they remember at some point, and in multiple instances, having conversations with a long-lost grandparent or a parent or a sibling who had passed away. At those moments, ask yourself the question, Am I in my astral body? So what does this key of discernment tell you? It tells you, well, if we are at this moment and you see yourself in this lecture, ask yourself the question, am I in my astral body? And now that you're here within your physical vehicle, make the habit of just pulling on your fingers. But pull on your fingers, not with just the intention of popping them, but with the intention of stretching them. And what will happen is that as you repeat this very same exercise in the astral plane, you will see that as you pull on your finger, your finger will stretch. And when you let go, your finger will come back to its normal size. And you will realize, I am in the astral plane. 
And again, if you get too excited, that excitement is going to be transferred back into the physical body through that threat of antakarana, and the body's going to wake up. <laughs> it's going to pull you back. <laughs> so we just enjoy these things with a great deal of satisfaction, with a great deal of gratitude. But the habit, we have to make it. So remember, if you see a friend or if you see a crowd, if you see anything that catches your attention, whenever you are with somebody you love, ask yourself the question, am I in my astral body? For the next 40 days, as you are doing that practice of watching that transition state, start working on these habits. You will surprise yourself with the results. Now let's go into the deep practices, the deep keys per se. This key is called the key Pharaon, and the mantra is Pharaon. This is a practice that was used by the great master Yeshua, Jesus. And just like any other practice, this one requires of you to rest on your back, and it also requires of you to relax your physical body. In this particular posture, we are assuming this resting posture of the Shakmol. And notice that the Shakmol here, he raises his knees and brings his heels close to his hips. With the knees high, he is resting comfortably on his back, uh, but you can have your head resting comfortably on your pillow. And let your hands rest around your solar plexus. As you are resting comfortably like this, as you are breathing in through your nose, out through your nose, very important that we do these inhalations through the nose all the time, because as we will cover in more advanced lectures, the, the nostrils are connected to internal conduits in the body that allow us for the transmutation of our creative forces. What we will do is that as we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose, we make ourselves of our, uh, of our body. We make ourselves aware of our emotional state. You see, we acknowledge our current condition and we simply, with every exhalation, we just simply allow all of these things to dissolve. Anything that has been keeping us tense or worried, anything that has kept us distracted, we allow for these things to dissipate with every exhalation. And as we find ourselves with our body relaxed, we will chant the mantras Fa Ra On. How do we chant this mantra? Fa. through the nose and we will allow for the natural pressure built inside the body to chant the mantras because we need to be relaxed we are not going to stress the body chanting the mantra to make it loud or etc we simply allow the allow the body to sing effortlessly fa ra um. Practice the mantra. It is important that you practice the mantra because when we verbalize these mantras, they are so much more powerful. So you can verbalize it, but of course we also have to be considerate. We have to be good housekeepers. If our spouse is laying down next to us and they are not interested in gnosis, or if they are too tired and exhausted with the day, we're not going to be chanting mantras to not let them go to sleep. We will then chant the mantra with the silent word mentally. 
and with every exhalation, see yourself chanting every syllable. Allow your physical body to receive and manifest that gentle softness that comes with the relaxation, that very subtle vibration that comes with the deep relaxation itself. Samael says, when you're doing this practice, use your objective imagination, friends, that is clairvoyance, and see yourself standing at the foot of the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> see yourself there. Don't just imagine, just see yourself there. The sand at your feet, imagine the brightness of the sun, the majesty of the construction, the roughness of the stones, just see all that. And as you gently relax, if you are not able to detect the transition state, you will naturally appear right there in that land of the pharaohs. Just make sure that the next morning when you wake up, don't move your body. Because if you wake up and you have a good recollection of your dreams, the moment that you move your body, you shake off the memories out of the astral body and those memories are then lost. So be very gentle when you wake up in the morning and run a retrospective exercise so that you can once again see everything that you experienced, that you heard, that you witnessed, things that you were told. All of that is valuable. And if you have a Gnostic journal next to you, if you don't have one, get a notebook and keep it under your pillow with a good pencil and then write everything down. Because you will see how often the same symbols and the same messages are delivered to you. This is the practice with the mantra Pharaon. There is a combination of mantras as well that is called Fewindacht that is very powerful to help develop the right faculties so that you can unfold consciously in your astral body. When we chant the mantra Fewindacht, as we vibrate that vowel E, that sounds E, it allows for the vibration of the creative larynx. This larynx is important because not only it is associated with the creative power of the word, it is also the chakra, the magnetic center in the body that gives us the ability of developing the magical ear. That means that we can hear within the physical body, the things that are said in the upper realms of creation. The next combination, U-I-N, wing, it allows for the vibration of the chakras and the solar plexus, right there, three fingers above your navel, and the chakras of the head. These chakras in the head are very important because it is here in the head that we have the chakra ashna, the third eye, that allows us to see the things that the eyes of the flesh cannot perceive. So we're speaking about hearing and we're speaking about seeing. And when we chant dacht, the letter A not only allows for the vibration of the chakras of the lungs, very useful because they allow us to extract prana and charge the body with this vital force, but the letter A also allows for the vibration of our thymus gland. And the thymus gland is right there at the center of the heart. And the letter G it enables the vibration of the liver and the spleen. And the liver is important because the liver is the foundation of the astral body itself. So how do we chant this mantra? Fe Mm-hmm. 
Chant this mantra, and as you are resting comfortably on your back, aligned to the magnetic north, with your body relaxed, as you notice that you are reaching that state of transition between the visual state and the sleep state, just get up, leap with the intention of floating, and if it doesn't work, it's perfectly fine. We lay back down and we continue with the practice of this mantra. Samael gives us a beautiful exercise to meditate in our cardias. That is right there, our heart plexus. It is this location right here where we have this heart temple. And Samael says, when we meditate in the cardias, wake up early in the morning and set yourself in a comfortable posture. For most of us, that can be sitting comfortably on a chair. It doesn't have to be anything complicated as the lotus posture or anything else. We can be simply sitting comfortably with our body relaxed. And we will face east in the direction of the rising sun. And what we will do is that as we breathe in through our nose, with our eyes closed, we will use our objective imagination to see the projection of a radiant golden cross. A cross that exists right there at the center of the sun and that it has projected itself directly into the temple of our heart. And as that light radiates directly into your heart it not only reflects this golden cross but it makes your heart glow with the splendor of the sun itself when we do this practice we start developing the ability to unfold consciously in our astral body as a matter of fact it is the combination of the merits accumulated in our heart what grant each and every one of us different faculties, attributes, virtues, laws. All of these things that make up the solar soul itself. So we will see this golden cross radiating divine light, reaching our heart and making it glow in divine splendor. Samael says, do this for an hour every day for up to three years. And as we are doing this, we chant the mantra, O. Oh. O. Oh. Chanting the mantra over and over and over again. You know, some students say, one hour, that's a lot. They say, three years, really? That long? <laughs> and at the same time, there are many students who may be listening to this lecture that heard this lecture maybe 15 years ago. <laughs> so I guess that the message is, Time will continue being that cosmic force that unites events in their logical sequence one after the other. And it will never stop doing that. So whether we take advantage of it or not, it's up to us. Time will not stop. We might as well make the most of the present moment. And if we were to practice this every day for three years, we will make tremendous progress and if at first you cannot do one hour but you can do 15 minutes or 20 by all means 15 or 20 minutes is better than no minutes at all so meditation on the cardias visualize the cross see your heart temple radiating with that divine splendor and meanwhile chant the mantra all the next practice 
using the very same mantra, oh, we can focus in our heart, particularly this magnetic center that exists within the heart itself. And here, what we have is the chakra anahata. This chakra anahata is the very same church of Thyatira that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. And here, what we would like to do is to work chanting the mantra O, because as we start chanting this mantra, we start slowly perceiving a sound that vibrates deep within the cells of the brain. And this sound is known as the Anahat sound. The Anahat sound is, it sounds like the sound of crickets. And if you were to remain very calm and very quiet at this moment, and you were to direct your attention deep into your head, it is very likely that you would be hearing it. This Anahat sound is a sound that you can modulate and you can either make it very loud or you can tame it down. For us to unfold in our astral body, we can lay down on our backs, we can relax the physical body, and we can start by chanting the mantra O. Oh. As we are chanting the mantra O, oh, we will use all the air that we breathe in through our nose and we will allow the natural pressure built in the body to use it to be able to vocalize the mantra. With every chant, we bring in deeper and deeper relaxation into the body. With every chant, as we are practicing that visualization of that golden cross, we make our heart center more active. We invite it to vibrate in higher harmony with the rest of creation. And as the relaxation continues to increase, the Anahat sound becomes more prevalent. As you start bringing then your attention into the Anahat sound, With every exhalation, you will find yourself closer to that transition state between the sleep state and the vigil state. The moment that those initial images start emerging, that that initiating element becomes present, at that moment, do not identify yourself with the body. Don't ask yourself, is this the right moment? Do I have to breathe a little longer? Am I relaxed enough? Is this the right time? Is that the initiating element? <laughs> because if we start asking ourselves these questions, we are back into being tensed up. No, 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 no. We want to see ourselves like a cloud. Feel yourself vaporous. See yourself light as a feather and as that sound becomes more and more noticeable deep within your head as you notice that transition state in that lightness just get up and leap and ask your divine mother to take you where you can learn from the masters and we laugh a little because we have heard of students who have told their Divine Mother, Divine Mother, please take me where, where you know I deserve to be. And the experiences turn to, tend to be a little bit stressful. <laughs> because certainly none of us are here because we are saints. <laughs> so we ask our Divine Mother to take us so, to that location where we can learn directly from the lips of the Masters. And she will help us. Now, there's another mantra called Ephraim. And as we chant this mantra, this mantra puts into play many aspects of our body, 
particularly because it allows many chakras to start vibrating. We start with the letter E, chanted E. We already know that that allows for the vibration of the creative larynx, and thus it helps us develop the magical ear so that we can hear the words of the ultra. Then there is the letter H. That H sounds like a deep exhalation. That is indeed the breath of life. But listen, when we chant that mantra H, that is the mantra of the powers of the element of air, of all those forces of motion and action that exist in the cosmos, and that invites all those atomic elementals of air that exist within the Constitution to help us unfold consciously in our astral body. Then there is the mantra Ra. Ra is a mantra that is chanted when we're doing pranayamas, particularly at the moment in which we're doing those Egyptian prostrations. Chanting the mantra Ra allows not only for the vibration of our blood, because our blood carries elements of fire. You see, there is a lot of electricity within our blood as well. But chanting Ra allows the seven stars in our body to vibrate harmoniously. Those are the seven main chakras in our, in our spine. From the very base of the spine to our uterine or prostatic chakra, to the one at the solar plexus, to the one at the heart, the one in the throat, the one in the forehead, all the way up to the one in our crown. How do we chant the mantra Ephraim? The letter I allows for the vibration of the chakras in the head, and the letter M allows for the vibration of our creative organs and enables the transmutation of our creative energies. So the mantra Ephraim. Resting on your back, your body relaxed, and as you see yourself reaching that transition state, we get up and we leap with the intention of floating. And if it doesn't work, we get back in bed and we try again. And as we're approaching the end of our lecture, this is the mantra Egypto. This is a mantra that we chant mentally. This is a very simple exercise to do. And this practice will not create any distraction, whether we have a baby with us in the room or our spouse, or if we have pets that are a little skittish, we, we, it does not distract anybody. The letter E for the creative larynx, the letter G for the hepatic center, meaning the liver and the spleen, the letter I for the chakras, in the head, namely Ajna, the third eye, and Sahasrara, the crown chakra. And then the T strikes directly in the consciousness, and we finish with the letter O to allow for the vibration of our heart center. <sighs> Chapter 
chant this mantra over and over again, relaxed on our backs, observing for that transition state between the vigil state and the sleep state. And here we're going to give you an additional four mantras. <laughs> All of them on our backs, relaxed body, looking actively for that transition state between vigil and sleep. The mantra S simply sounds like a very gentle stream of air just flowing. And in the mantra Ejipto, in the mantra S, we are replicating the sound of the sacred fire. This mantra invites the deepest states of relaxation because the, the natural restriction of the air to allow it just to flow as a very gentle whistle invites you to remain deeply calm and it helps you to find so conveniently that transition state. Then there is the mantra, Tai Re Re Re. Tai Re Re Re, it asks that you identify yourself with the wind See yourself vaporous, light as a feather. And that mantra, when you chant it, chant it mentally. Tai re re re. Tai re re re. Tai re re re. Notice the letters A, I, and E for the vibration of the thymus gland at the level of the heart, the lung chakras, the head, ashna, the third eye, and in the throat, the creative larynx. Then there is the mantra Rusti. On your back, relaxed body, chanting mentally. Ru Rusti. Chanting it over and over again as we look for that transition state. And we would like to close with the mantra Omnis Baum Igneos. As we are chanting this mantra, we rest on our backs and we relax the physical body. We invoke of our innermost. We beg with our heart and with our soul so that our Father who rests in secret can take us consciously out of the body. And this is a mantra that we verbalize. And it sounds like this. So, dear friends, this has been our lecture today. We have in our hands 12 beautiful keys to put in practice so that we can unfold consciously in our astral body. There are way more details in the actual lesson that you can receive uh, directly from the ICQ. And of course, you know that all of these lessons and all of these courses, they are certainly free of charge. All you have to do is request them 
you will get them and just bring your best effort with your best discipline and your best tenacity forward so that you can move and make yourself triumphant in these exercises dear friends again this has been our lecture on astral unfoldment thank you so much for joining us this evening and may all beings be happy